Hey Ganawagi, welcome to the first episode of Educating Ganawagi Rono. I'm Francine Chapman and I have a special guest here, Trey Lauder. And we're really excited about taking this opportunity to introduce this new program to the Ganawagi community. Throughout the year, we will be focusing in on what's going on in the Ganawagi education system. That's right, we'll be giving you the hookup. So what do you say? Shall we get started? For sure. To kick off the program, look at some of the projects and events that are going on in our schools. Hi, I'm Kwasedi. I teach grade 5 at Garunyanua School. And the students in Garunyanua had decided to take part in the Helping Haiti project. So the grade 5s, what they did was they put together a collage. They researched on the internet to find pictures and words that uh, portrayed the devastation in Haiti. And we brought in a bank, a John Deere bank. So when you put money in, the lights flash and it gives the sound of a tractor. So the whole theme is helping to rebuild Haiti. We have uh, several students here from grade one. And are you from grade one? I'm from grade two. Grade one and two. Okay, some of these came and they brought in their own money as a way of donating towards Haiti. She brought in her rolled pennies. He brought in some, some bills. And this little boy over here, you want to come over here? Mm -hmm. You want to tell them what your name is? My name is Dahajerate. And what happened one day? Why did you decide you wanted to? Because I wanted to help Haiti. Because they were poor. I just wanted to help them. And where did you get your money from? My grandma. Yeah, and you, well, your, your, your money was part of your lunch money, right? Mm -hmm. So was there a picture up here that really mm -hmm. made you think about your lady to Haiti? Which mm -hmm. one was it? <coughs> yeah, the same here. He really saw that one and wanted to really help. I'm giving donations for Haiti because it looks like they're so poor they don't have anything to eat, live in, or they don't have anything to help them get better. I wanted to give this money to Haiti because if they didn't have no money, they couldn't buy no houses or anything to give them food and bandages for their boo-boo cuts. Want to show how much money you're donating to Haiti? The other day we had the whole education center present for a workshop and as the staff was coming out they were also putting in money. And we have a very generous donation from one of our Garunyanoha's own staff, Ana de Gandaka, so we, Haiti thanks her very much for her, don her donation. I will now put it in. You know, students were always busy. Yep, 
and we'd like to think it's because there's a method keeping students busy. In fact, the Ganawagi education system is developing ways that will keep the Ganawagi students on the road to success. And Donald Hash will give you all the details. I was um, hired to work as a curriculum consultant for the First Nations Student Success Program, the FNSSP. Um, it's a program that was a, a proposal program um, that's funded through INAC and FNEC. Um, it gives our schools the opportunity to look at their curriculum, uh, specifically at this point in the area of numeracy, literacy, and retention prevention. Um, so each of the schools has a team of teachers. Um, we're, I'm working with each of those teams um, in setting goals in each of those three areas. Um, so each school has set a goal for literacy and we've been working on um, either reading strategies or writing workshop at all three schools. Uh, we've had opportunity to have professional development, so we've had speakers coming in to the workshops with the teachers, uh, we've had workshops with the students, um, we've also had opportunities to send teachers for training. We've been able to purchase new materials for our schools um, in the area of literacy. Um, at Gurinyuha School in particular, we've worked on the library, so we've enhanced um, the material that's in the library to help with that transition from Mohawk Immersion to English. In the area of numeracy, the schools are working on the Math Makes Sense program. So we've purchased the uh, additional materials that go along with the program. Um, so there's more manipulatives, things that the kids can work with. Um, we have workshops um, planned in mathematics. Because um, the math is taught solely in the language from nursery to grade four, we wanted to enhance the program by adding more hands-on centered activities. So we have um, someone coming in. Uh, we purchased um, tons of materials uh, for students to work in centers for math. And we have a person coming in to train the teachers on how to set up their class in centers and how to um, make sure that all the concepts are being covered through these games. The teams are quite focused on um, looking at what are their areas of need and really enhancing the programs that are in place in some cases and in others replacing. We've also started doing the um, CAT4 assessment um, which is the Canadian Achievement Testing. The positive thing about this assessment is that it provides the teacher with detailed information on the areas of strength for each student and the areas of need. So they're able to better plan their curriculum based on those areas of need and to look at interventions. Teachers have gone through assessment workshops at all three schools, looking at building criteria with students and helping students to self-assess. So I think one of the goals that we've been talking about at each of the schools is trying to move towards a portfolio assessment where students um, could participate in their own reporting sessions and um, set their goals for future learning. In the areas of retention prevention, we have many things that we're looking at at each of the schools. Um, Cattery School is already in partnership with Concordia and they have lots of after school programming and activities. Their phys ed program is is quite good. They have um, their phys ed teacher does many different uh, extracurricular activities. At survival school they have activities that are on an ongoing basis with wrestling and cross-country skiing and running. Um, they also um, have a hockey that goes on as well. We're looking at this point we added in a girls fitness um, which is going to be offered after school. We purchased new equipment. About 15 students have volunteered to be part of the after-school program at Gurinuha School. So they are going to run um, a sports program, an arts and crafts program, and a cultural enrichment program. Uh, I think it's really positive that we're able to use the students from survival school as our leaders in these programs. Many of them are graduates from Gurinuha School, and so they can use their language again by going back to the school to work with the students. Financially, there's a benefit because we're getting materials and training that were needed and that we couldn't access without this funding. So the, the financial aspect of being able to get all of these things is positive. Um, for the students, it's going to enhance their learning opportunities, both academically and socially, because we're going to be able to um, get top of the line programming, of the resources. Um, we have lots of resource support in the schools, but now we have the materials and the training that 
you know, that are needed. Um, we've also had opportunity um, as a partnership program to speak with many of the uh, schools in the surrounding areas to find out some of the programming that they were using, some of the things they found beneficial, looking at how our students were transitioning into their schools and looking at issues that maybe we need to start working on. So we're able to better plan now by having this uh, program in place. It's a three-year plan at this point. Um, our, our first year plan actually was to gather baseline data and to look at where we would like to set goals for the following two years. Um, however, we're way ahead uh, because we've already begun implementation. So we're very excited about that. Um, we've had several meetings um, where we go back and report and um, we're, we're, we're actually one of the few places that have started implementation.